Alma Mahler was part of the Viennese bourgeoisie at the beginning of the 20th century. She was a composer that was known for her irresistible charm and her free spirit. She married in 1902 Gustav Mahler, another composer who stopped her from composing. She then had an affair with Walter Gropius and, after her husband died in 1911, she married him in 1915. But between these two marriages, she met a young rebel artist and will spend a lot of time with him between 1912 and 1914. This young artist's name was Oskar Kokoschka. While Mahler was 33, he was 26. While she was part of the wealthy upper class, he was a provocative artist. So provocative that Archduke Franz Ferdinand said of him, this fellow's bones ought to be broken in his body. The relationship between the two lovers was far from being ideal. Though it was very intense, Kokoschka would become very possessive, extremely jealous, and the relationship became very toxic for both lovers. He wrote about 400 love letters and would continuously paint and draw her. In 1913, the couple goes to Naples where they get caught in a storm and decide to take shelter in a boat on the seashore. Back in Austria, Ama told Oscar that if he painted a masterpiece, she would marry him. Of course, that strongly impacted Kokoschka, whose emotions were lived very intensely. Because of this ultimatum, he paints his walls black and isolates himself in order to create this masterpiece and marry the woman he loves. In a study for the painting he'll make, he draws himself with Alma, both serene and holding hands. But Kokoschka's isolation will make Mahler slowly stray away from him, and the artist definitely felt it as, in the final version of The Bride of the Wind, the two lovers are not holding hands anymore, and while Alma is sleeping, Oscar is definitely wide awake and almost looks troubled. In 1914, Mahler leaves Kokoschka, which was very difficult for him. He joined the military, but in 1915, he gets shot in the head and stabbed in the lung, but still survives. Doctors will declare him mentally ill, which could explain his unhealthy obsession over Alma Mahler. In 1918, he ordered a life-size female doll to replace Alma, giving very specific details on how he wanted it to be made. He wanted the skin to feel like actual flesh, yet that didn't really work. He painted the doll and even created a self-portrait with it, but seeing how it could never replace his ex-lover, he destroys the doll during a party. Kokoschka continued to love Mahler for the rest of his life, and he said, In my bride of the wind, we are united for eternity. So let's take a closer look at the bride of the wind. This scene is the one the couple experienced in Naples during the storm. You can see the turbulence of the waves surrounding them, the sky, and some mountains. The brush strokes are violent, which are evocative of the storm's energy, but also of Kokoschka's intense emotions. There's a torrent of colors chaotically branching out in every direction. As for the subjects themselves, they look comfortably nested in what looks like a boat. Alma is sleeping, her tone is very light, and the brush strokes representing her are much more delicate, while for Oscar, there's a violent contrast in the folds of his skin and his hands are a mess. He looks a lot less comfortable, and unlike Alma, he's not sleeping. There's a certain ambiguity in this painting. We can't really tell if this painting is a beautiful depiction of love, or the representation of a man anticipating the departure of his loved one. Either way, the feelings expressed in this painting are undeniably intense, and that raw power that Kokoschka transferred on the canvas is definitely awe-inspiring. We'd like to thank our supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to become a patron, check us out on patreon.com forward slash the canvas.